Okay, welcome back, ENG 460. <clears throat> Today we're going to do the ALU. All right, let's take a look. Last time we did the sine extender. Output of the sine extender went into the one input of the MUX. Well, now today I want to build this thing called an ALU. It takes 32 bits in here, 32 bits in here. It outputs uh, a zero flag, a one bit. It also does the ALU result, which is 32. And then there's some control input that comes into this guy that tells the ALU what to do. So we want to design an ALU today. All right, let's get on it here. So what do we do? Well, let's see. First thing I want to do is I need to add um, an ALU v uh, VHD file to my project. Select the project, project new source, VHDL module, and we will call this guy. How about um, ALU? All right, that sounds good. And um, yeah, let's actually use this guy now. Let's um, say we had two inputs, didn't we? Um, A1 and A2. We'll call them A1 and A2. And uh, let's see, what were they? They were a bus and 31 down to zero. And this was a bus, 31 down to zero. <coughs> then we had what? <coughs> an ALU control. Okay. That was also an input. And let's make this guy four bits. Yeah. That way, 2 to the 4 is 16. This ALU can do 16 different functions. And then, how about ALU result? ALU result, and let's see. If uh, 32 bits is going in, well then, 32 bits is coming out. And 0. 0 is going to tell me if the result of the ALU um, was 0 or not. Now, ALU result was an out. 0 is also an out, but 0 is 1 bit. It's not a bus. It tells me whether the operation was 0 or not. All right, let's do next. Finish. And take a look at our ALU. Okay, there's the ALU. Now, I'm not going to get rid of that one. Okay. And there you go. There's our entity block. All right, there's our entity right there. Nice. Now, in the ALU, I'm going to do some addition, which means I need to bring in this other library right here so I can use signed or unsigned data. So I want to uncomment this guy, and then we'll just bring that up there. I'll leave the comment in there so you can read it, because that allows you to use convert standard logic and standard logic vector to signed and unsigned data types and use arithmetic on those. Okay? But there's my input, A1, 32 bits, A2, 32 bits, ALU control, 4 bits, ALU result, 32 bits, and 0, 1 bit. Let's go back and look at our PDF. There's your ALU, 32-bit input, A1, 32-bit input, A2. Uh, there's our 4-bit control, tells uh, the ALU can do 2 to the 4, 16 things. A 0 flag, notice the 0 flag, it's kind of going up here to this branch logic. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe we do a branch equal, branch not equal, and we do a subtraction, and that zero flag tells me uh, whether I should take the branch or not. Interesting. Well, then the ALU result is 32 bits out. It could either drive memory, or it could actually go to a MUX and get wrapped around to be written back into the register file. Okay, so we got our ALU here. Okay, now let's actually implement this guy. Well, how do you implement this thing? Well, let's see. I would probably do a process block. So let's do that. Let's uh, implement a process block down here. So if I come over to here, do a process. Now, what kind of things go on my sensitivity list? What's going to cause that ALU to change? Well, if anybody changes the input on the two inputs, but then also if somebody changes the control of what the ALU is supposed to do, those things will cause the ALU to um, do something different or to execute, to change the values. Right? So then come over to here. And now we've got an end process. So what do we want inside this guy? Now let's take a look here. Uh, I am going to do a case. Let's kind of scroll down a little bit here, get some more real estate. Yeah, some spaces down here, which will bring that up. There you go. That's the trick I wanted. So we're going to do a case. Okay, on what? How about ALU control? Okay. Is. And then the way that guy works is when ALU control, which is 4 bits, is equal to this, I am going to do, how about a bitwise and, all right? And what we'll do is we'll take a look at several cases. We'll do um, and 
or how about add, subtract, how about a set less than, how about a logic nor, and then how about some other stuff. Alright, so let's see, when this guy's a 1, what I want to do is a bitwise or. Okay. And when this guy is a um, 2, why don't we just do addition. We're just kind of stubbing it out here, kind of making comments to let us know all the things that we can do with this. And then let's uh, let's change these guys to, let's see, 0, 1, 1, 0. You know, there'll be a reason for that later. And then this one will tell the ALU to do subtraction. And then let's see, the next one, how about 1, 1, 1. And we'll say that guy does set less than. How about that? Set less than. That'll be the set less than command. And what other? Should we do one more command? How about do a logical nor? Or a bitwise norm. Yeah, I guess I should say bitwise norm. Same thing. All right, then uh, let's see. Well, let's stub them out. Let's go back and do our and. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to set the ALU result. But in order to do that, I can't really set that guy directly because I'm going to need to read them later. So I need to create a temporary variable. So let's do that. Signal result x colon standard logic vector 31 down to 0. Okay. And let's see. We could do that. Now we could set it equal to 0. But let's see. Let's just come down to here. Now we're going to use that guy. And that's going to be my intermediate result. I'm going to say result x is going to equal a1 and a2. And there you go. We just implemented a bitwise and. What are on the input 1, input 2 of the ALU, we do a bitwise and. Now I could do the same thing for a bitwise or. And there you go. All I have to do is change that to or. Okay. And let's see, what about addition? Can I do the same thing here? And then subtraction. Well, is this going to work? If I come down here and do this, well, you might think it would work, but actually it's not. It's going to give you an error. And what's happening there is that these guys are um, standard logic vector. Well, you got to convert them to unsigned first. And you got to convert it to unsigned. Okay. Once you convert them to unsigned, then you can add them. And then after you add them, you got to convert them back to standard logic vector standard logic vector. There you go. Now you can do that. Yeah, so what I should really do at this point is just copy that and then replace that down there and then change that minus sign. And there you go. So now we've got we can we've got the ALU which we can do a bitwise and a bitwise or an addition of subtraction. And let's see how do we do a set less than? Now that's kind of interesting. Actually, I've got the code over here. I think I'm just going to copy this in instead of me uh typing it out. Okay, so let's come down to here and do this. And what you've got here is if A1 is less than A2, okay, so set less than, then the result X is going to have one bit set. Because remember, that's how set less than works. Set less than on two registers, you set a bit. Otherwise, the um, result will be zero. Okay. So there's my set less than. Now what about a logical nor? Well, that looks just like what we had up above here. We just copy this or, and we can come down to here. And instead of an or, we'll just change it to a nor. And let's see, what else do we have? Um, but I wanted my logical nor to be about 1100. Zero, zero. And then what I can do down here is I could say any other codes because there's 16 possibilities. Others equal null. Okay. Then here, that would be like a no-op. And what I could do is I could say result x takes on the value of quad zero, quad zero. There you go, yeah. So at this point right here, we have an ALU, and then ALU control tells me what I do. Now this it, result x is a temporary, is a signal, internal variable. I got to map that to my output variable. 
Okay, so what I need to do down here is have some concurrent code. And I'll just copy and paste this guy down here, which will look like this. Now remember, a process code is sequential. Stuff outside a process is concurrent. I have to figure out that zero flag. Well, that zero flag depends on the result. So the first thing I do is I, I assign result x to ALU result. Okay, that's the output of this thing. Now, in order to get the zero flag, I have to read my result. Now, the reason I had to use result x is because if I used ALU result, it's an output. It wouldn't let me read the value, okay? because you have to read the value which is why I had to use that temporary value. But I assign the temporary value to ALU result, and then I say, well, when result x is equal to 0, set the 0 flag to 1. Otherwise, set the 0 flag to 0. So now I can tell whether the ALU operation, regardless of whether it's a nor, subtract, add, set less than, or, and, I can tell whether the result is 0 from this 0 flag. Okay, let's go ahead and save this guy and see if it compiles OK. Looks like we might have some errors here. Okay, so we've got some errors. Let's kind of debug this. Standard log vector. Okay, well, I know what that one is. Standard logic. I can't type. Oh, that's an easy error. All right, what else we got here? This guy here, ALU, behavioral check syntax. Oh, we got some more. So we go to our first error. Double click that. Uh, in process. Well, what's miss? Oh, I know what's missing. I had a case statement inside my process. So now I need a an in case. Okay. And hopefully that will fix it. ALU, behavioral check syntax. And there we go. We we just built an ALU. Let's go back to our PDF file. We just built an ALU that takes four bits in, which are 16 possibilities, but we only implemented a few. We uh, implemented a bitwise AND, a bitwise OR, an addition, a subtraction, a set less than, and um, what else did we do? I think we did a NOR also, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did a NOR. And then we also generated that one bit zero flag that'll tell me if the result is zero, which I can use up here in some branching logic. Otherwise, I'm going to take the output, and that output can either be an address or it could go to a MUX with the possibility of getting fed back to the register file. All right? We'll uh, do a test bench on that next time. Okay? Thanks for watching.